I'm walking the full Camino de Santiago Portuguese route from Lisbon to the city of Santiago de Compostela. I'm documenting my whole experience in this video diary so that you can use it as kind of like a video guidebook. I cover stuff like how to pack for a month on the Camino de Santiago, what you should bring each day in your day pack, how to look after your feet, if you can't find the exact information that you're looking for in this particular video, just go onto my channel and have a browse around there to my other Camino videos. You should find the information that you're looking for in one of them. If you still can't find it, just go on to the comment section and leave a comment there and I'll answer it as soon as possible. And if you want to, you can also go onto my website, travelandculture.ie and send me an email through the contact form and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Buen Camino! the most important thing that we're going to talk about is taking care of your feet on the Camino. Let's look at it this way. If you're walking for like 20 to even 40 kilometers every day, day in, day out, the most important thing that you have to worry about is looking after your feet. Not about having your hair straightened or having mascara on you. None of that is irrelevant out here. Nobody cares. All right. So first up, you need to buy a good pair of shoes. Now, if you buy a good pair of shoes, yesterday and you wear them out on the Camino today, you're asking for trouble, all right? These shoes, I've worn them hiking. I have made, they might be about four years old and I've worn them out walking like millions of times. So they're quite old. You can see they move quite a bit. So these shoes know my feet inside out and I'm not breaking in new shoes on the Camino. Like just don't, don't try to break in new shoes on the Camino. The Camino is not the time to be breaking in new shoes. You do that weeks ago, if not months ago. All right, so these shoes have been well, well worn. And um, as you can see, there's quite a bit of support in them. There's a bit of like rubber around here. And um, they're not particularly waterproof because I'm walking the Camino in summer and it doesn't rain a lot. So waterproof isn't your number one priority unless you're planning on walking in summer. Just something that's quite light yet offers a bit of support. Um, now, for me, I have quite a high arch, so I needed to put an inside sole in it that offers a lot of arch support because when I'm pushing my feet down constantly, I get pains in my arches. It feels like my foot is kind of collapsing in. So if you get this, if you have a high arch, make sure you get an insole that offers you quite a bit of support. Now, this is the type of stuff you can buy in like the high street or in the pharmacy. It's not stuff that was molded especially for my feet. I mean, these shoes cost like, I think about 40 euro and this was about 10 or 15 euro. Like you're not talking big money. You're just being sensible, yeah? So a light enough shoe, but that offers support. An inside sole if you need one. That's your feet taken care of for the daytime. Now, at least every four or five nights when you're back in your hostel, it's so important. I mean, like this little thingamajig, I know you would kind of wouldn't rate it or whatever, but when you walk in the Camino and you have like little tiny growths at the corner of your nail on your toes coming out, it's gonna dig into the corner of your other toe and over five, 10 or 15 kilometers, it's gonna, that little pinch is gonna feel like agony. It's gonna be so exaggerated. So about every three or four nights after your shower, sit down and clip down your toenails as low as you can possibly clip them without clipping the skin. Just keep them really, really super short. Um, now, after about a week walking, I started to notice I was having trouble with my knees. So I thought maybe I just change up my shoes and see what's more comfortable. So I change up, I just start wearing my like my sport shoes or just any like whatever Nike, Reebok, Reebok, whatever brand you like to wear. The reason I changed over to these is because they're so light. Like these were just, they're like a summer shoe. They're so, so light. So it wasn't adding any weight onto the pressure of my knee and also, the end of it was quite springy so I was getting a lot of like suspension I'm getting a lot of suspension when I'm walking in this one as opposed to this is a little bit heavier and it's just not giving me any bounce and that's what's that's why my knee is suffering that and carrying my backpack of course so um this one has just been a lot more comfortable for me 
because of the injury that I'm having, but you'll figure it out. Like you have, bring three pairs of shoes with you. Bring your hiking shoe, your sports shoe, and alternate between the two of them when you're walking in the daytime. Now at nighttime, you need like a slider or a sandal. So something that doesn't encapsulate your whole foot. When you get back to your hotel or hostel in the evening, take off these completely, take them off, get rid of them and put your sandal on. Let your feet air out completely. Um, now, we need to talk blister care because the chances are that you're going to get a blister walking the Camino and it's going to be excruciating, all right? So there are some socks that you can get that prevent, well, they say they prevent socks, so there are like blister proof walking socks. Personally, I think the only thing that can prevent a blister is God's mercy. You're probably going to get one like, but anyway, with the socks, um, the, these are blister proof walking, I can say that sometimes, blister proof walking socks. So um, a nice cushiony towel inside to, to soak up all the sweat. And also if you try to get them without that, you know the line stitching that you get on sports socks and it, when you're, it digs into your toes. So if you can get the ones with none of that, like that line, stitching across the toes they're better again if you can only get the regular sports sock that has the line the stitching across here just wear them inside out leave the stitching on the outside and that prevents them from digging into your toes as you're walking all right so blister care listen up all right if you happen to get a blister you won't be the first walker nor you won't be the last walker to get a blister on the Camino but listen to me all right listen to this don't start going all dramatic and start pulling all these new treatments out of the air. The treatment for a blister is basic. It's so basic you're going to want to add stuff in. Don't add anything in. Listen to this exactly. Get in at night time, have your shower, take off your shoes, put your sandal on. You're trying to dry out that blister, all right? So you poke it with the needle. There's a little hole in it. Push the blister so everything squirts out the hole. Yeah, now you're almost dry. Leave that cap on. That's called a skin. Leave that skin on top of the, like leave that skin there. Do not pull off the skin from the top of the blister. Don't do that. Because when you pull that off, all the skin underneath is completely raw and you're exposing raw, painful skin to have to walk in the next day. So you know when you punch the blister with a pin, press it, let the juice squirt out and leave that cap on because that cap is going to protect the raw skin underneath all right now what you do there is leave the cap on and leave your shoes off as much as possible if you have like a, a walk in one of these in a sandal version that's open wear that if not just wear your nice comfy socks the next day but once you've left the skin the loose skin on over the raw skin it shouldn't be so painful you go pulling that off you're asking for trouble nobody can help you you don't need to put any creams, anything, anything fancy, no sewing in with a needle, pulling the tread out the other side. I've seen some weird, freaky blister care shit on the Camino. Just do what I'm telling you. Poke it, press it, squirt it out, leave it. The whole idea is to dry it out. You start putting cream on that, you're keeping it moist and keeping it moist is keeping it painful. The only time you need to put any sort of cream on your blister is if you got have green goo coming out of it and it's infected then you need a betadine or some sort of antiseptic but this is it right go through the steps again see the blister take off the shoes to dry out the foot prick it with a pin press it let the juice squirt out leave it that's it no more dry 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 all right you can thank me later